All right, fam, let's talk about this. We're going to tie this all together because this is, uh, this is something I really want to talk about. Our good friend, uh, I think she follows you on Twitter. I don't think she follows me. Caitlin Johnstone wrote this article in Medium. And this is just, this was like one of those articles where it was just pure butter, pure cheese. It, she really lays it out. And it says the establishment only dislikes Trump because he puts an ugly face on empire. It's true. And, and it really goes into it. And now check it out. It says Barack Obama has given his perfunctionary speech about Black Lives Matter protests taking place in America today. And it was every bit of <laughs> as full of pretty words and empty of actual substances as you'd expect from a president who spent eight years stagnating the progressive movement with the empty hope narrative while advancing the same murderous, oppressive agendas as his predecessor. Yeah. Damn, the, 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 the first line. I mean, can we talk about that for a second? Why not? We always looked at it as Obama as the guy who came in with hope as the progressive, but he, he, he in fact, furthered some of the policies, the evil policies, yep. the, the surveillance state mm -hmm. of all, all the people who came before him. Is that not true, fam, or am I lying when I say no, that? No, that's entirely true. And I think we have to, we, people who understand this, you know, especially people of color who understand this, I mean, really have to jump on and, and really talk about who Obama was and, and how under uh, him and Biden, they deported more people than, than Trump has. Yeah. I mean, that has to be said. They built the cages where Trump is now putting these these kids and these families yeah. and i mean it, you can't just say go register to vote uh against donald trump because that's not going to solve the problem even if tweet. biden is, is is the the president or trump we're still going to have the same freaking problem because they still work for the oligarchy yeah. so that's the thing it's the system has to be dismantled and when people t when that that's the part we have to get to because there are a few people that are aware of that but there are many of pe people who are out there protesting that are uh, neoliberals because they, okay they they're jumping on this cause but they don't understand really who joe biden is they may not know how bad he is. They don't know. They just don't know the history that he wrote the crime bill. Something as simple as that. Joe Biden writing the crime bill and what that did to the black community. What, how that affected them. How so many people were jailed. Hillary Clinton's super predators. Bill Clinton. Yeah. All, of, all of these people that have tokenized black people and Latin American people for their votes have literally done absolutely nothing for them. And the more... I go out there and the more we talk to people, the more I see that the, the younger people are aware of it. Yeah. But the people that are a little bit older are still clinging into that whole Obama is this, Obama is that. And that's why we have to remind them Obama is a reason, one of the reasons we have Donald Trump. Years of neoliberalism led to, to people being feeling abandoned by the Democratic Party. That's why they went to Donald Trump. West Virginia went to Donald Trump. They would have gone to Bernie, but because they hated Clinton so much and they hated how she didn't do anything for them, they went to Donald Trump. That is something we always have to remember. The white working class was just as affected yeah. in a lot of ways it, it, the, with factories being closed, with NAFTA. Um, the, you know, we can't forget that. We have to remind people because some people don't know about that. Yeah. And uh, you were talking about the kids in cages, the same murderous, oppressive agendas as his predecessors. Let's not forget about... Uh, uh, Honduras and Manuel Zelaya yep. and what he did. All right, he filled those cages. He built those cages for those kids to come here after he completely just ruined their country uh, and took away their natural resources. Because that's what Manuel Zelaya was all about was about bringing socialism to his people, education, healthcare, all those things. He was taking poor people out of poverty and moving them up. And uh, America oligarch said, uh, 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 we can't let the people in America on their doorstep see socialism because right. they don't want that. Let's go take them over. And bes besides, we can steal all their natural resources as well uh the next one says the former president talked about changes that need to be made as though he wasn't the most powerful politician in america yep. for two full terms yep. praise the nation's police officers, saying the vast majority of them protect and serve the people and encourage them to continue making empty gestures of solidarity with the protesters to calm them down my obama needs work but once again fam mm -hmm. the former president talked about as if he didn't have Two full terms. Let's not forget the first two years of his presidency. He had a full Democratic yep. House. He had a full Democratic Senate. And he gave us mandated insurance. Yep. 
which, that's which ended means. up costing us the problem that we're in now. And and that's it. That's what people have to know. Obama was a warmonger. He extended, expanded the neoliberal policies of his predecessors, and he absolutely hurt the black community and the immigrant community and led to the foundations that Trump now has to do whatever he wants, whatever he's doing now. Again, we wouldn't have Donald Trump without years of neoliberalism. We yeah. just wouldn't. You, the, the pendulum wouldn't have swung that far right no way. if it if people had had been content with what the status quo was that's the thing people just voted out they thought trump was going to be an anti-establishment guy they they thought trump was an anti-interventionist obviously they were wrong but that's what they thought a lot of people he got he got you know a lot of libertarian votes because of that now he's in danger of losing that because of how he's acting but at the same time the democrats aren't doing themselves favors by putting joe, joe biden, biden. Because that's the argument right now, even with the fact that he wasn't the anti-interventionist that we hoped he was, because I think we all just hoped we didn't really count on it. Uh, he still is. A lot of people say, well, he's a lot less of a warmonger than Joe Biden. If you look at Joe Biden's history, right. Joe Biden not only has the Iraq war that he was pushing on the floor and, and, and Trump can always fight against that narrative of the Iraq war for what he did to those Republicans in a debate in South Carolina when he called George Bush and his daddy and all those people and said they were liars and they lied about it. He's going to use that while you'll have a video of, of Biden on the floor saying that Bush was OK. And also wait to know what George Bush had to say in the protest. Film. I'm just going to read this quick little line and I'll pass it to you. It says George W. Bush also weighed in on the protest with the compassionate conservative who mur murdered millions of Iraqis, sending liberals throughout the Twitter sphere into fits of ecstasy with his emotional plea for empathy and shared commitment and bold action and a peace rooted in justice. It's just symbolic that's platitudes. Bush. That's all it is because that's all they can do that's because they've done nothing for policy, uh, policy wise. They've done nothing but hurt people. The same people protesting, they have done nothing but hurt. They, they, especially my generation and the gener the younger generation, they're sick of this. They, they see it. They see it because they haven't had a chance to be away from war. They haven't had a chance to be away from recession. Uh, the, their whole entire lives have been plagued by both. So when you when you when people the people that are like, yay, yay, Bush, either they don't know or they haven't endured what people are enduring now. And that's yeah. going to change because the, all of this stuff, we have to be the ones, the progressives in general, everybody has to be the ones talking about how George Wish was a warmonger, yeah. how Obama was a warmonger, what they did, how they didn't help people of yeah. color, how they created the, 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 the reasons for Donald Trump's existence. We can't derive we can't you know go away from that we can't because otherwise this movement gets co-opted by the likes of obama and trust me this is what they're attempting to do let's take a bit of super chat contribution from toon c god damn it i love you fam i love you too toon c I, I are think, you included in that I, 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 I'm, I was just talking about, I'm, ah, just I'm just kidding we don't yeah. know what fam it is We'll it's take fams. it. We'll, we'll we'll take it to fams. We'll take the love, definitely. Uh, fam, the next part of this right here too, it says, and I love this because it's really ridiculous. People really have TDS for wanting to bring back George W. Bush. I mean, that's, George that's W. Just... Bush was way worse I think than he was Donald worse than Trump. Trump. Absolutely, policy way wise, worse. you can say Donald Trump is authoritarian because he is. You can say Donald Trump oh. is uh, uh, says racist things. He's nasty. You can say all these things about Trump, but he says more than he does, and and Bush does more than he says because yes. he wasn't. He being entirely manipulated that. by the the CIA and by the military industrial complex. Bush isn't the smartest tool in the tool shed. I mean, he was definitely one of the least smart presidents we've ever had. He had bologna sandwiches and Cheetos when he was on. Hey, have some Cheetos and vote for me. <laughs> and that's saying a lot because it's not like Trump is a genius either, but I think he was definitely yeah. more uh, street smart than Bush here. I, Trump is smarter than George W. George W. Bush has got to be one of the dumbest presidents I've ever seen in my life. And when people say, oh, you know, the, George W. Bush is a lot smarter than he appears. Like, no, he's not. And there was a great documentary called The Smartest Man in the Room. And it talked about what George W. Bush did. Johnny, you're going to love this. What George W. Bush did was hire dumb idiots in his cabinet positions and appoint judges so he could be the smartest guy in the room so if this guy is so dumb the people he appointed it was ridiculous uh this one says establishment narrative managers on both sides of america's imaginary partisan divide i love you caitlin johnstone have been saturating the mass media with gushing praise for the two former presidents and their wonderful words of healing and unity <laughs> and indeed the words of are quite nice they will change exactly nothing but they will sound Nice. Once That's again, all. it's platitude. Mm -hmm. It's whatnot. Everybody, Obama speaks nicely and he looks nice and he's very proper. 
and, and you know, and George W. Bush is the the con- the compassionate conservative. But what do they do? I don't give a Even shit. Even Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney, another one being propped up. I mean, he's not as bad as the other two, but he still he still was not a friend of uh, criminal justice reform. By the way, you can look at his record. He was a fr- oh, uh, in favor of three strikes. He was in favor of the death penalty. He was a very, very hard on hard on crime type of guy. Yet people are over here pra- praising Mitt Romney. Yeah, like he's like oh, because well, he tried to. He was one of the Republicans to cross the line to impeach Donald Trump. And that little phony act when he's crying, I got to do this. Get the hell out of here, Mitt Romney. You it, what? And I want to talk about a crony capitalist. You want to talk about a crony capitalist, Mitt Romney? Oh my lord. And that is exactly what the U.S. president's real job is, not to end police brutality and systemic racism, not to make changes which benefit the American people, and certainly not to make the world less violent and a murderous place, but to say pretty words which lull the public into pleasant propaganda-induced coma while the sociopathic oligarchs who really run things rob them blind. This wouldn't happen if we had Hillary Clinton as president. We would not be seeing these protests in mass. We won't. We wouldn't. People would have been completely asleep. They would have been at brunch. They would have like we would have it would have been an entirely different co-opted sort of mentality. The one thing Trump has done is is bring out the ugliness, exposed it. Yes. Because even though he is a part of that ugliness, he like he's not doing the whole like, uh, you know, sugar coating. Yeah. It's it's all there. It's all out there for everybody to see just how bad we have it. Uh, Donald Trump or Joe Biden. That is sad. It's a sad, sad choice we have in America of the duop of the the two party system. Yeah. And and your tweet, what you wrote down is what kind of inspired me to go with this story today. This and Caitlin Johnston, what you talked about because it's really about the system and also the fact that a lot of people are talking and I know a lot of people who aren't in our echo chamber or our bubble or as knowledgeable as we are when it comes to foreign policy and all these nuances about politics we've been spending time in this for a while we we weren't always this way I think we were leftists that really hoped that the Democratic Party could change their ways but when you get inside and you see what they're all about you see the phoniness about it so when people are already saying like oh man you got to vote for Biden because otherwise Donald Trump it's like no you have to realize that it's the same thing. One is just kind of a little bit more transparent in his ugliness, and he puts that face on it. While the other one's going to sit there and tell you pretty little things. Uh, I'm the guy who did this, and I'm the guy who did this. And really, you are just as evil, if not worse, because people will go to sleep when they think a leftist Democratic pre- president yeah. is there. They think morally the left is more compassionate and you know more more humanist. And, whatnot. and, I, and I would agree to that in ideology sometimes, but you know what? At least the Republicans are transparent and about again, who they are. And again, Johnny and I said this too. We have to separate the left from the Democrats because I'm the left. I, I have zero association with, with the Democratic Party. I can't stand them. I hate them. I hate them as much as I hate the Republican Party because they, they lie to your face. And they don't just tell you that they're racist. They, they lie and they say they, they love all people, but they enact racist legislation just the same. They stand by as the Republicans do what they want. They don't stand up to them. That's the whole point yeah. of what we're talking about. The Democratic Party is, is not an opposition party. Not it is all. a party of complacency. It is a, a party that is uh, completely losing power because they are pretty much just the same as the Republican Party. They are pretty much one party uh, under the the oligarchy. They yeah. are like they, they just employ the status quo. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That's why well, it doesn't matter if Trump wins or Biden wins. It's still the, the status quo. I think I still think that if Biden wins, people are going to be more likely to feel like they've accomplished something, even though they haven't. And um, people would kind of like fall back. Think yeah. like, OK, that's good. We got a Democrat now good i think there's there's the good, there would be a lot of that the democrats serve the oligarchy and that's the one thing we have to keep in mind and this is the next sentence right here because she kind of lays it out caitlin johnstone when she talked about uh, uh, uh putting people into a po- uh, pleasant uh propaganda induced coma while the sociopathic oligarchs uh, who really run things rob them blind and this is not accomplished by tweeting obnoxious things about shooting thugs she's talking about donald trump and getting censored by twitter it is not accomplished by threatening to implement martial law against the will of the states. It's not accomplished by using the military to brutalize protesters so you can po- oppose in front of a burnt church with an upside-down Bible. It is not accomplished by calling the brother of George Floyd and being curt and uninterested and dim- dismissive. It is not accomplished by first mismanaging a pandemic, then mis- mis- mismanaging a response to an incendiary... Sin- inc- can you hit that word for me? Inc- incendiary. Incendiary police murder than having nothing soothing or sympathetic to say that makes people feel like you're listening to them or care. And we talked about that tweet. It's like you don't even care. Once the looting starts, the shooting starts. It was really insensitive. Okay, it is not accomplished by creating an environment which allow 
photos to circulate of the nation's capital burning. And that right there is the one and only reason why certain elements of the establishment do not like President Trump. Whenever I point out the many, many evil establishment agendas that have been advanced by current U.S. by this current U.S. president, I always get Trump supporters asking me, well, if he's serving the establishment, how come the established media and politicians attack him huh, so much hysterically, huh? Okay, this is why. At first glance, it might seem strange to see Democrats and their aligned media shrieking about Trump with such an unprecedented degree of vitriol. They aren't doing this because Trump resists the establishment in any meaningful way or domestic or foreign policy. He provides no significant resistance to toxic establishment agendas at all. Right. The reason there's been so, uh, such a shrill historical rhetoric about the, this president from the establishment narrative managers is because unlike his predecessors, pre predecessors, Trump puts an ugly face on empire. Exactly. And, and it allows, uh, and the reason you know Trump isn't really uh, doing anything that the, the Democrats aren't really complaining about Trump in, in itself is because Donald Trump, like he, he literally, it's, it's, it's putting all the focus on him, right? Like everybody's so focused on hating him. So obviously they benefit from that. The, the establishment benefits if you focus on Donald Trump only and not focus on how we got Donald Trump. It's always about the moment before. Yeah, it's always about that. It's never just like things don't just happen right there. There's there are things that have been happening for years yep. that have led to the election of Trump that have led to the moment we're having now. Everything that's happening now is because we didn't deal with the issues of before up until now. And now it's just all coming out in like a giant, like yeah. uh, you know, fountain of everything. It's just blah, blah, blah. it's just going. I'm going to read these last two paragraphs, fam, and you got to love this part. It says, establishment narrative managers understand how to skillfully manipulate public perception without ob being obvious about it. Right. Not mentioning any names, Obama. And they understand how, to, how easily an incompetent steward of empire can snap people out of their propaganda trance. They, therefore, dislike Trump for the same reason a new mother dislikes a no noisy neighbor. They'll wake the baby. They don't exactly. dislike Trump because he does good things, and they really? certainly don't dislike Trump because he does bad things. They dislike Trump because he does bad things in a way that startles people out of their sleep. Okay, exactly. That's the real reason the political media class have been behaving so weird the last four years. It isn't because Trump is not, loyal, is not a, a loyal empire lackey. He is. It isn't because he's a Russian secret agent. He's not. And it isn't because he's uniquely depraved president. He's not. Yep. It's because he allows people to see the perverse me mechanics of a gl global, sprawling, murderous empire for the sick, evil thing that it actually is. That and nothing more. That's why another four years of Trump, <laughs> which is more likely than happen, it'd probably be better than a Biden presidency because a lot of people will go back to sleep. If this angers people and people start... Because here's the thing I'm hoping. A lot of these people that are getting out there in the street that are so emotionally... Uh, you know, emotional now about what happened, that they dig deeper, they dive deeper, and they see who's really pulling the strings at the end of the day. And, they, and, and I welcome those people who are opening this quest, who are joining us out in the streets now, because we've been out in the streets for a long time. Yeah. So seeing all these new faces, hey, let's go, the education starts. So yeah. subscribe to the Convo Couch <laughs> and learn more. Exactly, exactly. We, we, uh, we've been out there for a long time and just seeing and just I, I, I am afraid that not enough people are seeing that. Um, and, and that is something that uh, I'm not necessarily thinking Biden is better or Trump is better. But I do think like it, a, a democratic presidency, no matter how corrupt it is, will will put us back to sleep. It'll, it put, it'll make people feel like, oh, we got the, the 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 Trump out of the White House. We got the orange man out of the White House. Yay. Now yeah. we can do something better. No, because guess what? It, it, these these politicians are all ruled by by the intelligence agencies, by the military industrial complex. They get their money just like Jackie Lacey gets her money from the police department that as long as they're paid they they're, they're not going to serve the people that's the whole system we have to attack and we need to keep pushing that yeah. because otherwise we're going to get joe biden and joe biden uh you know it, it's just i i just think it'll be detrimental to our movement i don't think it's going to allow us to have any more influence people think that somehow joe biden being president would allow progressives to fight back more no yeah. you're not going to have that like hardcore opposition you're not gonna it's not gonna be as obvious yeah so and it sucks what happened with aoc because we put her there to fight the establishment now she joined him i saw your video with graham it was amazing uh greg vara thank you for the super chat contribution it is oh appreciate it on the couch got fee for that one Damn. 
We've seen how Bernie Sanders has fallen in line with the establishment Dems, so why wouldn't they allow him to become the nominee? Vendetta because for he, unveiling. He hasn't really fallen in line with the, I mean, he has, some, like, presently, but they know that policy-wise, he Bad would actually be pushing, yeah. He it would threaten the status quo. They're not going to let him anywhere near that because Bernie Sanders is he a threat want to it. the status quo. I don't think he wants it. Well, I mean, I don't think, he I might mean, not want it for, once again, well, I, fam, I, I would never put, back, uh, put it past the fact that he could have been threatened uh, and was told the the deep state, the intelligence community, the unelected well, that's why he's government, not, they might be well, scaring him. Bernie know? Sanders is a threat to the, the banks, the Wall Street, the oligarchs, et cetera, but he hasn't really threatened the military industrial complex too much. No. And, and I think that's why Bernie's alive. So Nancy Pelosi. Is that where we're at? Oh, wait, wait, the truth about, yes, Nancy Pelosi really quick. I just want to put that up from David Serrato because once yeah. we were, again, we're talking about there is no real opposition, right? Yep. We just, you know, they're there. It says Nancy Pelosi is trying to give Donald Trump more police power. She, she's right now pushing to reauthorize the Patriot Act to give him more police and surveillance power right now. This is completely unacceptable, but this is what we're talking about. You, we need to, uh, you know, I, I really want to like, like do like, uh, I don't know if Glory can help me, like a Gen Z like TikTok on, on like Nancy Pelosi. Stop yas queening Nancy Pelosi, people. Like. She she is like the evil queen, okay? She's like, I mean, this woman has voted for Trump's military budgets, lets him do whatever he wants when it comes to privacy, when it comes to uh, freedom of speech, our civil liberties. When it comes to all these things, she stands in the way, too, of progressives. She did not, you know, the little uh, the little kind of revolt AOC had in the, in the squad in the beginning, she didn't let him anyway. She's the, the gatekeeper that keeps that from happening i think without nancy pelosi we'd see more positive results with the members of the squad that we have in there excuse but me, then it's mama bear excuse me yes mama bear pelosi thank you um you know but mean instead she's just over there uh wearing her pink mask you know wearing her little or that matches her little outfit showing her ice cream twelve hundred dollars yeah, huh? yeah her freaking uh twenty five thousand dollar fridges i mean that is that is like if that happened in like france We'd be freaking at her house, like uh, rioting, and and it'd be Bastille style. But Americans like to protest for symbolism. We need to take that symbolism and make it into actual focus on actual policy. Ah, Pijman has joined the uh, the rock fan. Thank you, Pij. Good to see you. We got 330 people watching on the YouTube. Sweet. Fam, this is another thing. Now, listen, I'm not voting for Joe Biden. Uh -huh. You don't have to vote for Joe Biden. I'm telling you right now, you vote third party to, to vote, vote for Joe Biden. Biden. But here's the thing. Even as a candidate, if I was giving his campaign advice, I'm like, you guys are screwing up right now. Yep. You're doing that uh, yeah. kind of like Jeremy Corbyn thing. You're being, you're walking one line. You're kind of going back on your word. Pick a side and stay on a side. If you're going to sit there and say you want to now defund the police and then, then defund the police, yeah, there's some video of you back out there being really chummy with police force and talking about building a fence and whatnot and writing the crime KKK bill. KKK members. But there's a little again, picture of him yeah. with the KKK members. You're supposed to be like, now you're supposed to be reformed and whatnot, but he can't walk that line. You know, he's already doing that. Biden walks a cautious line as he opposes defunding the police. You know what I'm saying? So he's caught himself in a bad position right now. It's like, who do you represent? Well, but Biden's not going to give us anything, you guys. You know it's why? Because we're terrible. not we're not demanding it. You want if 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 Joe Biden wants to get your vote, he should support Medicare for all, defunding the police, uh, election reform, and no more war. That's how you get Joe. Biden. If he doesn't do that, you say, you know what? Thank you. No thanks. We're not going to vote for either party. You have the capacity. That's all you have right now. You if in half of the time our votes don't count. Most of the time our votes don't count. So vote for a third party. I think. Showing the establishment that you're going third party is a big symbol because you yeah. don't have to vote for either end. You, we, that's how we stop it, right? Exactly. Voting is one thing, too. It's just one thing. Yeah. Right now, things are getting accomplished not within the electorate, but outside the electorate. We can't continue wasting our time trying to reform a party of gangsters because it's not going to get reformed. They hold all the power. We have none. We yeah. have no power. We have no leverage. We have nothing. The only power we have is our vote and our ability to demand and protest outside. Yeah. And so if, if Joe Biden thinks that you're yeah, already going to vote for him, if you if Joe Biden thinks you're already going to vote for him, why the hell would he give you anything? If you're saying vote blue no matter who, why the hell is he going to give you Medicare for all? He's not going to because you're not demanding it. And that's the problem I have with people who are saying you need to vote for Joe to get Trump out. Why am I going to vote for Joe if he's not giving me anything more than Trump mm. has given me? Yeah. And you know what? It is important time to and 
fam, like I really am depressed right now because if there's any time to have a good third party candidate, it would have been right friggin' now. This yeah. is you're ripe for the moment right yeah. now to get you above the five percent. Yep. You know, I might be voting for Howie Hawkins if he's the Green Party nomination. I might be voting for the Libertarian. I don't know, but that's the only way you do maintain power or gain power for that matter. Is as soon as they cheated your candidate, you get up and you walk away and you say, yeah. you know what? Peace. Enjoy yourself. So getting caught in this this false dichotomy that you have to vote for Joe Biden, otherwise the orange man's going to be in power, is really just a false. It didn't work four years narrative. ago, you guys. And it, it kicks the can down the road. It's we, actually worse for us. We thought it was the end of the world when when Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump, right? Yep. And so what happened? Okay, yeah, all this shit has happened, but all this shit needed to happen so people could realize how fucked up our country is. Yeah. Because otherwise, we wouldn't have realized it. We yep. wouldn't have realized it. People would have still been at brunch if Hillary was elected people would have been like oh it's okay we have a woman ah like that's it and like that's that that's not this yeah. going anywhere harley router says i voted for hillary clinton because i wanted to have the first woman president yeah well what about michelle bachman sarah palin you want them to be president i don't think so uh fam there's also something to point out too as well because chuckles schumer we, we sometimes forget about chuckles chuckles is the most powerful democrat in the state now this was in 2018 i put this out because you know it really talked about Chuck Schumer as the worst possible Democrat leader on foreign policy at the worst possible time. Once again, also praising the embassy getting moved from Tel Aviv yep. to Jerusalem. A lot Freaking of things he once, he once was against the Iran, Iranian nuclear deal. He's very a pro-Zionist yeah. as can be. You know Zionist. what I'm saying? He made sure that Donald Trump got extra money for his military budget. He didn't get it down. And a lot of times when he's voted, he didn't whip the votes publicly. You know what I'm saying? So he kind of hid in the shadows because if you're the leader of the Senate, you're supposed to whip some votes. You're supposed yeah. to whip support. So a lot of times he didn't whip shit. OK, uh, Trump supported, uh, excuse me, Schumer supported Trump's bombing of Syria, both in 2017 and in 2018. OK, he said it was appropriate. It was the right thing to do. He also supported all the actions in Libya back in the days when Obama was there. So, I mean, there's so many things that Schumer has done. He was also uh, a supporter of John Bolton's 2005 nomina nomination to be the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, and he said stupid shit like a vote against Bolton, Schumer proclaimed, was a vote against Israel. That's John Lord Bolton. So you can just see, once again, the Democrats, you, you, you cannot give them power. They just pretend like they're the yeah. opposition. They pretend they they're for the working party. And that's the worst thing about them. Like I said, a lot of we the Republicans. Be, if we were happy with Democrats, we wouldn't have Trump yeah. and we wouldn't be in the situation we're in now, by yeah. the way. If they had done their job, as being the back when they were supposed to the the working people's party, uh, they're no longer that. They don't even follow their own platform. Their their own platform, which isn't even anything great. Mm. They can't even follow that. Yeah, yeah. So so I mean, it, there is no opposition party right yeah, now. No. There isn't. There's the people that are all over the place, and they're here, and us, and yeah. the the movement that is. Yeah. Uh, has been building since you know Bernie oh, and even God. before that, but there's but there's no real opposition party right now to the Republicans. They are all pretty much in agreement, except a few symbolic bullshit differences here and there. You put on a pink pussy hat, you're a Democrat. You put on a MAGA hat, you're a Republican. Either way, it's still an ugly hat. Yeah, and I, I was just <laughs> thinking when you said that about Bernie and looking at Glory. Remember we used to get burnt a savage Bernie? I suggest people don't see two aisles. I suggest people see one, one aisle. aisle. What and I'd like old... to see some bold leadership from this body. Yeah. The old school Bernie. I man. love old wow, school Bernie. Wow, dude. The old school Bernie. Man.